Hello again, everyone. We are back here in 10.7 for proving angles congruent. So this relates to our 10.6 lesson where we started talking about how we write proofs, how we write justifications for every step, um, and how we make sure that everything is mathematically sound. We're going to skip this for now. I'm going to come back if we have time, but hopefully you are in the Pearson module and you went ahead and looked at this um, because you're able to. So here we go. All right, sorry, I had to pause the video there so I could make things bigger. So the first thing we want to talk about is what a theorem is. A theorem is anything that we can prove true. So it's a conjecture or statement that when we start, we may not know that it's true, but then we will prove it to be true. So our vertical angles theorem, which hopefully you know about vertical angles and how we have proven them to be true, but one and three would be vertical angles and two and four would be vertical angles, so we know that they are congruent. Go ahead and read through this. And then we're going to look at a proof for vertical angles. So let's work the math to prove that all of this makes sense. So look down through the steps that we have here. We are told that 1 and 3 are vertical angles, but we want to prove that they're actually congruent. So we know that 1 and 2 are supplementary because they together would make 180. And likewise, 1 and 3 are supplementary because they together would make 180. So how do we know that angles are supplementary? We know they're supplementary because they form a linear pair. So when two angles combine to make one straight angle, that's a linear pair, and that makes them supplementary. Because they're supplementary, we know that they equal 180 degrees, so we can just say the sum of measures of supplementary angles is 180 degrees, or we could also call that the definition of supplementary angles. For step four, we have that angle one plus two is gonna equal angle two plus three. Well, since they were both equal to 180, that does hold true because the transitive property of equality, they are both equal to 180. So we could have started with 180 equal to 180 and then substitute it in, but we don't necessarily have to do that. For five, we see that angle one is equal to angle three. How do we get there from step four? All we had to do was remove the angle two. So we subtracted angle two from both sides. And then we see that angle one is congruent to angle three just because angles with the same measure are congruent. If the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three, that makes the angles themselves congruent. For our got it here, go ahead and find the value of x in a two column proof. So you can start by just working all the math, what would be your left column, and then go back and write your reasoning. Or you can work the math and the reasonings at the same time, which I think is actually easier because in the moment of doing the math, your brain is thinking about why it is you're doing that math. So the first thing we would do in this solution is set these angles equal to each other, and we know that we can do that because they're vertical angles, so my reason would be the vertical angles theorem. And then there could actually be a step in between here when I subtract the 2x from both sides, uh, which is actually what's happening between here, so we see the subtraction property of equality. Although we don't write the math um, all the time, you can write the math, so in there we would just have minus 2x, and then over here we would have a minus 2x. And then we just get our answer, x equal to 40, so we're done. For our practice problem here, find the measure of each variable, x and y, through a two-column proof method. So we have options here, actually. So uh, I chose this method, uh, setting uh, y and 76 as a straight angle pair, and then setting 2x and 76 as vertical angles. And notice I don't have the degrees symbols because that's very hard to format in here, but you know, these are all degrees, pretty much all my values here. So when we set this equal, my reason for that would be straight angle pairs sum to 180 because y and 76 are straight angles, they sum to 180, and then I can subtract from both sides, subtraction property of equality, to find that y is equal to 104. I can set up the vertical angles theorem and just say that 2x is equal to 76, which then I can divide on both sides, division property of equality, and find that x is equal to 38 degrees. We could have also, once we solved for y, used this information to help me solve for x, but we always want to avoid using information that we found. You always wanna be apprehensive that the information that we found might potentially be wrong, so try to only use given information like the angle that we know, the 76 degrees. So angle one congruent to angle four is our given here in problem two. And what we're setting out to prove is that angle two is congruent to angle three. So we start with our given always. 
pause the video and figure out what next statements and what next reasons would come here and you can see that we can solve this only using five steps or four more steps beyond the given. And up here's a clue for you. We're going to use the vertical angles theorem. So, since I start with one congruent to four, I can find vertical angles for either one and four. So if I start by just saying that angle four is congruent to angle two, it's because they're vertical and vertical angles are congruent. We know this, we've proven this. After we see that, we can then say that because four is congruent to two and four was congruent to one, this, see our one is congruent to four, four is congruent to two, therefore we can say that one is congruent to two from our transitive property of congruence. So see there, this is like A to B, B to C, therefore A to C, that's how that works. And then after that, we kind of start all over again saying that one is congruent to three because they're vertical angles. So I look at my next vertical angle pair, I can use the same reason multiple times. So don't worry about doing that. And then I do the same thing again with our transitive property of two being congruent to three. And that is exactly what I was trying to prove. So we're done. Your got it here is very similar to that last problem. So go ahead, pause the video and in your notes, take the time to actually write out the proof that would prove that angle one is congruent to angle two, is congruent to angle three, is congruent to angle four. All right, so we always start with our given. So we have angle one is congruent to angle two as our given. Our next step would be showing that angle one is congruent to angle three since we were asked to use the vertical angles theorem. That's the first place we start is to look at vertical angles and we know vertical angles are congruent. From there, I can show that angle two is congruent to angle three because if one is congruent to two, actually take this the other way, if two is congruent to one and one is congruent to three, that means that three is congruent to two. Therefore, I can prove this based on transitive because it's that whole A to B, B to C thing. <clears throat> so then step four, I again am gonna look at vertical angles. So angle two and angle four because of the vertical angles being congruent. And then again, I'm gonna use the transitive property to say that one is congruent to four. And because I have all of this proven, I can now say that one is congruent to two, to three, to four, based on the transitive property of congruence and combining statements here on my left. Now, this gets a little bit more difficult when we are asked to do this without using the vertical angles theorem. So think to yourself, how could we do this without using vertical angles? We cannot use any of those vertical angles um, reasons and therefore we can't really set the vertical angles equal to each other unless we have a different reason. So I'm not going to write out the whole two column proof because I may ask you a problem like this on one of our assessments but what we can start with is the angle one being congruent to angle two because again that would still be my given and then I could use the fact that linear pairs are equal to 180 so I could make that my next step and that would let me prove that since they're equal to each other and the sum is equal to 180, then they are both equal to 90. From there, I can again set up a linear pair with two and three. Since I already know that angle two is 90, I would then infer that angle three is also 90. Do the same thing for the linear pair of three and four. And from there, we'd be able to prove that all of them are congruent. So when we start looking at this practice problem here, I've color coded a little bit on the right here. I need you to pause the video and try to fill this in in your notes. You've got three reasons to fill in and one statement to fill in. So here's how we're gonna start to be working and what you're gonna see on your homework. You have holes in the proof. So you see that angle three is congruent to angle six. You wanna say, why am I able to say that? What allows me to say that? So pause the video, work through the rest of this, then come back for your solutions. So in our reason two, why are three and six congruent? And we can say that they share the same two lines and they share that vertex, which means they are vertical angles. We can use the vertical angles theorem. Then pay attention to what might be coming next. It is um, the reason behind us being able to make this statement is the transitive property. So since we know it's the transitive property, it's gonna be one of those if A then B and if B then C situations. So angle one is like our A. Angle three is like our B, angle three again is like our B, and angle six is like our C. So if one is congruent to three and three is congruent to six, then I can go ahead and say that one is congruent to six. So we filled in our angles one and it being congruent to six here. Now we see that angle one is congruent to angle four. So if I look up here in my uh, little uh, 
set of lines or set of segments, whatever we want to call it. Angle one and angle four share the green and the blue lines here. They share a vertex, which means they are in fact vertical angles. So we can use our vertical angles theorem. And then angle six being congruent to angle four. Look at how we get that statement. If I go back up to step three and I grab a highlighter, I can say angle six is congruent to angle one. And angle one is congruent to angle four. So therefore, this again is another transitive. Six to one, one to four. Therefore, six goes to four. And I can color code that to help you see. Angle six to angle four. So what property would allow us to do that? That's right, our transitive property of congruence. Now, some people like a paragraph proof better. All a paragraph proof does is take your two column proof and combine every statement with its uh, coordinating reason. So if we go back to our problem where we had uh, given to us that angle one is congruent to angle four and we're trying to prove that angle two is congruent to angle three, we can write a paragraph proof based off the two column proof that we had. So a paragraph proof is where we make the statement and then we give the reason right after that. So angle one is congruent to angle four is given. Angle four is congruent to angle two because, so instead of setting it in a different column, we now say because vertical angles are congruent, then we can start by saying the reason by the transitive property of congruence, angle one is congruent to angle two, or we could have said angle one is congruent to angle two because of the transitive property of congruence. Then we say angle one is congruent to angle three because vertical angles are congruent. And then by the transitive property of congruence, angle two is congruent to angle three. Same basic proof, just written in a paragraph form as opposed to a two column form. I'm gonna move really quickly through this so I can make sure that I get to the got it. So you have the problem three in Pearson. It is not um, in your notes. This is in your notes though. So writing a paragraph proof for angle, uh, angle one congruent to angle two, check out what they do here. and make sure that makes sense and I will come back for the got it. So in your notes, you should have a two column proof that lets us prove the vertical angles theorem. You wanna take that two column proof and turn it into a paragraph proof. All we're doing is saying that if angle one and three are vertical, that they must be congruent. So how do we prove that? Go ahead, pause this for a second and write out that paragraph proof. So this should look very similar to your two column proof. You will have every reason either followed or every statement either followed by its reason or the reason coming first. Um, so like when we say by the, that's putting the reason before the statement. So we're given here an angle four, <clears throat> not angle four, question four, that you have two different complementary angle pairs. We have one and two and three and two. And what you should immediately clue into is that angle two is used in both of these complementary pairs. So you should already be thinking about how we're gonna form this proof. Uh, this also should look very similar to a two column proof that we already took care of. So if one and two are complementary, three and two are complementary, this is given. We always start with a given. So by the definition of complementary angles, we have to remember what complementary angles tell you. One plus two would then equal 90. And therefore angle three plus angle two would equal 90. Then angle one plus two equals angle three plus two because that's the transitive property. 90 would equal 90 and then we could replace with one and two and three and two. So then we would subtract the measure of angle two from each side by the subtraction property of quality, we would then get that the measure of angle one would equal only the measure of angle three, and angles with the same measures are congruent, so therefore, angle one is congruent to angle three. That is a nice, clean, neat way to make a paragraph proof. That is all we have for today's lesson, so please make sure that everything on here is understandable and that you're feeling comfortable. Uh, this is the end of the chapter, so feel free to do uh, the reviews or try the quizzes on there. Please make sure that you've checked all of your homeworks with the answer key that is posted on Schoology, and please let me know if there's anything causing you issues so that I can help you uh, before we meet together in class. So thank you for your hard work, and have a great day.